I'm Laura Bonicelli, and we are going to cook with Italian style. It's not always fast, it's not always easy, and it's not always Italian. We use the freshest and finest ingredients that we can find and afford. And we not only savor the meals we make, but we savor making them. That's cooking with Italian style. This week, we are making homemade fettuccine with a marvelous tomato basil sauce. Let's get cooking. This is how I learned to make pasta for my grandma Lucy when I was a little kid. She had such a talent for making everything seem so special, so much so that my sisters and I would actually fight over who got to make pasta with her. And if the pasta actually made it onto the dinner table and my father was there, that was a huge deal. So what I have here is a ring of flour. I didn't measure this. Uh, we're going to make about three eggs worth here. So um, it's probably about two and a half cups of flour and I'm just going to crack my eggs right into the center. I made a little well. So the key to this is start small. And I actually started with making pasta in a bowl with the ring before she would ever let me do this. And what the key is, you just want the flour to incorporate slowly. I'm gonna show you now how I make pasta these days. This is my trusty Cuisinart, which I have put through a lot over the years. It still hangs with me. Into which I am putting two and a half cups of all-purpose flour. If you wanted to use some semolina, you could substitute half of it or a cup of it with semolina flour, and that would be fine. Now, how I do this is I put the top on and get this spinning, and then I start adding eggs. And as I said before, it's not an exact science, so I don't know exactly how many eggs I'm going to need, but usually it's between three and five, depending on the size of the eggs, the humidity, all those kinds of factors that you can't control. Okay, and you'll know when the dough starts to form to quit. So it's not there yet, so we're at three, this is four, I think this is going to be the one, yep. Now you see, you can see it's starting to form a dough and it'll start to spin around. And I'm just going to add about a tablespoon of olive oil in here. There we go. And I'm going to let this go, oh, for 30 seconds to a minute as it starts to collect. And this is the kneading process. So after this, I don't have to knead the dough at all. I just have to let it rest. Okay, I think this is done. Perfect. There we go take the top off and pull the dough out. And then I have a dish here and I'm going to just drizzle it with a generous amount of olive oil and my dough goes right in that and then I just flip it over and I need to make sure that this is completely covered with olive oil. Cover it with a bowl. I'm going to let this rest for about an hour and in the meantime we'll start working on our tomato basil sauce. What I've got here is about three vine ripened tomatoes and a couple of teaspoons of garlic and a little butter which we're going to finish the sauce off with and I'm just stacking up my, uh, I'm going to slice them in half, my basil leaves. Just a nice bunch of basil is what you want to put in there and we'll just get that sliced and I think I want a little more of that. Oh, this smells just fantastic. There is nothing like the combination of tomato and basil. It's just meant to be. So we'll just slice those in half that way, stack them up again, and then quickly slice them like this. Okay, so this is all set. What I'm going to do now is uh, heat a little olive oil in my pan about two to three tablespoons, and I'm gonna saute my garlic for a couple of minutes. My garlic is nicely browned, it smells great. And I just really wanted to cook the rawness out of it. I don't want it to get too brown. So into this, I'm going to add my tomatoes. Oh. And my basil. Let's stir that up. And we're going to do a little salt and pepper. We'll do a final seasoning. This is going to cook for, oh, about 20, 25 minutes. Let all those flavors melt together. Here's a little pepper. Put that in there. And then before we serve it, we're going to stir in about a tablespoon, tablespoon and a half of butter and do a final salt and pepper seasoning and we should be good to go. I've divided my pasta dough into six pieces and this is important. Make sure you put a little extra olive oil and 
turn these guys around and coat them because they will dry out really quickly and the olive oil will help prevent that. Okay, so you take one of them and this dough is so smooth and I'm just pushing it out so I can get it into my dough machine easily. So you kind of put it into a rectangle if you can manage that. And then douse it with a little flour to keep it from sticking in your machine. And this machine um, it's just your standard kind of pasta maker. They run about $50. This is set to one, which is the largest setting. And what you want to do is just get your dough kind of started in there. And then it just runs right through like the Play-Doh Fun Factory. And I'm going to do maybe a little more flour. And then I'm going to run it through again on that largest setting. You just click this down and it brings the rollers in tighter and you put it back through again. And each time it goes through, it gets thinner and thinner. The last, look how thin that's getting. <laughs> it's perfect. Okay, I'm going to lay this down on a clean towel. So I let this dry on one side for, oh, I don't know, three to five minutes, and then I'm going to flip it over so it can dry on the other side. We're not going to dry these you know, completely. I mean, what we want to do is just get them so that when they go through the cutter, they don't stick together too much, although they will a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is just slice them into lengths that are, you know, kind of what your typical pasta would be. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. Okay, we're going to let this finish. Getting dry enough to go run through the cutter. So this is a this is a really fun part of making pasta. You just run it right through the machine. So rewarding. So beautiful. And what I love about this machine is the pasta is just thin and Oh, it's just, it's just perfect. And it's forgiving. The machine, like, look at here. You see how it's kind of bunching up? It doesn't matter. The pasta still turns out fine. I don't know why, but it is just perfect. Wonderful. And I'm just setting this over on my towel to dry and grabbing another sheet. Clean up these pieces. So what my grandmother would do with any scraps is she would use them for soup anything that didn't fit into the, so that's the stuff I'm picking up here, that's what she would take and throw in a soup pot. Beautiful! I'm just arranging these a little bit, making sure that they're separated, which they seem to be doing very well. And I could just throw these right into my pot of water right now and cook them, and they cook up in just a few minutes. Um, or I can dry them which I sometimes do, but today we're going to cook them fresh. We're just I just carried my pasta over in my right in my towel and I'm going to just dump it right into the water. There it goes. Into the water. Perfecto. And I'm gonna give it a little stir. And this just cooks for maybe three to four minutes. Just test it. Here's our beautiful put that on the plate like so some of our tomato basil sauce. Oh, it smells so wonderful. Isn't that just beautiful in color? And then this is a piave cheese. You could use Parmesan garnish maybe off the back like that. Perfecto. Taking a little taste. Mm. That is perfection. You know, my daughter used to describe fresh pasta as having almost a springiness to it, and I think she's actually right. Anyway, I really hope you love making pasta as much as I do, and I really want to thank you for cooking with Italian style. Bon appetito.